my interpretation of mobile computing. For servos with the Raspberry Pi as control unit, turn this suitcase into a rover. The project was initiated by an offer from DF Robots, which included 5 servos and 4 so called Omni Wheels. Four of the servos are continuous rotation types, also known as 360 degree servos. These serve as drive motors to which the Omni wheels are attached. The geared motors can be controlled clockwise or counterclockwise via pulls with signals. A potentiometer enables the zero position of the motor to be adjusted. With the four drive wheels, the suitcase robot can move forward... ...or drive backwards... ...and turn on the spot. A special feature of the Omni wheels is that the robot can also move sideways, which does not work quite as well when the lid is open, as the front wheels then have less traction. A gyroscope with few extra lines of code could improve the precision of movement. The movement to the left or right is enabled by small rollers on the circumference of the wheels. These are arranged with the axis of rotation at a 45 degree angle to the axis of rotation of the main wheel. Two different types of Omni wheels are required, which are mirror inverted to each other. In the variant seen on the left, the small rollers are arranged at an angle of plus 45 degrees and in the variant seen on the right at an angle of minus 45 degrees. The robot has the identical types of Omni wheels on the diagonals. To move sideways, the wheels on one side must rotate in opposite direction to each other. The system only works on a flat surface, as all four wheels must be in contact with the ground at all times. What else is in the suitcase? For the project I've bought a touchscreen with a resolution of 1024x600 pixels, as well as a keyboard touchpad combination that is connected to the Raspberry Pi via Bluetooth. With that, the robot can be programmed using its own hardware. Currently I am busy with writing new chapters of my series on physical computing and with the suitcase robot I can write program examples and quickly test whether the code works as intended. Since blinking LEDs usually represent the entry into the world of programming GPIOs, five of them are attached on the lid inside the case. The simplest type of sensor for reading data are switches, two buttons are located below the LEDs. A Raspberry camera module is attached to servo number 5, so that the camera can be used for video conferences... ...or to transfer images in robot mode. With the Apache web server running on the Raspberry Pi, the robot can be controlled via browser and camera images can be transmitted back. How this works is described in various chapters about physical computing on my website. In this series I demonstrate how Python scripts, an appropriately configured Apache web server as well as HTML and JavaScript can control GPIOs over thousands of kilometers. All required software is open source and freely available, no need to enter a prison called App Store to write the code that literally moves the physical world. To build the robot, all you have to do is cut and drill a few openings in the case. As always, I did not do this with very high precision, because everything works perfectly that way too. 
The components are attached to the suitcase via 3mm screws or hot glue. With the two power banks, one for the servos, one for the Raspberry Pi, the programming station can be operated for several hours. Plug it into a wall socket to work even longer. And many examples of what you can do with some code lines and GPIOs is written on my pages, including the build instruction for this suitcase robot. Have a click! Anyone who would like to support me financially in my efforts to explain physical computing is welcome to click on the donate button on my website. Many thanks to all the great people who have already made use of it.